So in this video, we're going to use the discounted dividend model to find the cost of equity. We, in our last video, we changed or we consolidated the quarterly dividends into annual dividends. Um, and now the next step is to use this information and the price, which we got from Yahoo Finance, to figure out the cost of equity. And the cost of equity is basically the rate of return that shareholders demand or that they expect that from the company as owners, right? So what return do you want to get when you invest in a company? Um, and this is one way where we can kind of use historical information to guess, right? If the company thinks, I'm sorry, if shareholders think that the firm should be paying higher returns, they'll pay less for the stock. And so the markets, which deal well with information, use the price of the shares to balance out the rate of return that shareholders require. So what we need to do, using the di discounted dividend model, right? we would say that the cost of equity, RE, is equal to the next dividend that the firm is going to pay divided by the price at time zero plus the growth rate. That's essentially the formula that we're going to use. Um, it's in the book. And so we're going to calculate the growth rate in two ways. We're going to calculate the arithmetic average And we're going to calculate the geometric, and actually if I move these over here I might have enough room, or not. I'll deal with that in a minute. So we're going to create a column here where we calculate the growth rate, how much growth the dividends showed from year to year. Growth rate. All right. So the formula for growth rate is always the new value divided by the old value minus one, right? If you're, and here we're newest to oldest, but sometimes it might be oldest to newest. So you can't think the value on the top divided by the value of the bottom. You need to go new divided by old minus one. Drill that into your head. There's always somebody who, always a number of students actually, who do it the other way around and it's a common pitfall. So try to remember new divided by old minus one. Put your cursor over the handle. The type of X will change from this white X to a black X and you double click. It fills in. Down here the last one will say divided by zero and that's because we don't have a 2003 dividend so we can't actually see the growth rate. So we're going to clear this cell out. So what this is telling us, these are percentages, right? This is the percentage that the dividends have grown each year. So this $2.04 dividend in 2014 is 12% higher than the previous year's dividend of $1.81. This $1.81 is 16% higher than $1.56. And if I just expand these two cells, three cells, just for symmetry, a little bit, I don't have to change what I wrote. So my arithmetic average growth rate is just the average of these growth rates, right? It grew as much as 16% and one year it didn't grow at all. So if I average those, we could say that the dividends grow about 9.43% per year. The other way is by using the geometric growth rate which is the same formula that we used here, right? New divided by old minus one, except what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the new divided by the old, but because this is, what is this? This is 11 years of dividends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That means that it had 10 growth periods. So to account for that, we need to raise it to the one tenth, one, divided by the n minus one, minus one. There's a description of that in the text that you can find. So that would give us a growth rate of 9.34%. Well, this is the growth rate that we're gonna use as our dividend growth rate. So now here we're gonna use this formula. The cost of equity is equal to the next dividend that we expect divided by the price today plus the growth rate. Right. That basically tells us that in part shareholders want 
a yield, a dividend yield. They're going to pay a certain amount and they want dividends. They're going to get a certain percentage of that return as dividends plus capital gains, right? They want the share price to grow over time and we're just going to add G to that. So what we need to do is first, well, maybe I'll give you a, what should we call this? We should call this calculating cost of equity, right? First, we're going to calculate each year's growth rate. Two, we're going to calculate the arithmetic dividend growth rate. Three, we're going to calculate the geometric growth rate. And then four, we're going to project in this case, 2015 dividend. If you're looking at this in its next year, you'd be projecting 2016 dividend. And then we're going to use the projected dividend to estimate the cost of equity. All right. So we're going to say estimated. No, we're just going to call estimated. Sure, let's use the word estimated D1. That's the dividend next year, right? So this we could call this the estimated 2015 dividend. And that's D1. Yeah, there's enough room. So what we'll say is if the stock is if the dividends are growing at about 9.34% per year, we'll think that in 2013 there will be a dividend of at least $2.04 but it's going to grow multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate, just like we would use in future value problems. So we think that next year we're going to get a dividend somewhere around $2.23. Now we have everything that we need. We have the price, we have the geometric average growth rate, and we have next year's dividends. Those are the pieces of the puzzle that we need to calculate the cost of equity. So our cost of equity, RE, is going to be equal to, you need to use parentheses here, so our next dividend divided by the price that we would pay, that's some percentage return, right, plus our growth rate. So we would say that, sure, that shareholders of Hershey's, that Hershey's shareholders are estimating that they're going to have a return of about 11.39%. So when Hershey's is thinking, how much return do I need to give my shareholders in order for them to continue to invest in my company? They can look at today's share price and assume that these dividends growing at the rate that they're growing, balanced with the share price, mean that investors getting this rate of return are happy, right? Because that's what they're paying. So that's how we calculate our cost of equity. Happy calculating, and uh, of course, let me know if you have any questions.